Unit 1, Stone Age. Lesson 1, Hunter Gatherers. This lesson's about hunter gatherers, as you can see from the title. We're going to learn what it was like for the earliest known people um, and how they lived. There we go. Learning goal. We're going to compare the lifestyles of hunter gatherers with those of settlers of the early agricultural communities. So this lesson is going to cover what life was like for the hunter-gatherers. Lesson two, we're going to cover what life was like for the early agricultural communities once hunter-gatherers stopped hunting and gathering and started farming. Okay, the resources for this lesson are your textbook, chapter three, lesson one, starts on page 54, or the Study Smart workbook, which is the green workbook pages 67 to 72. Now we start with the Paleolithic era, or the Old Stone Age. Now the Stone Age has three eras, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic. Now Paleo means old, Meso means middle, and Neo means new. We're only concerned mostly with the Paleolithic and the Neolithic era in these lessons. The Paleolithic was the oldest, it was the earliest part of human history. Okay, and people survived back then just by hunting and gathering whatever food they could find. They developed some tools and weapons, but they were extremely basic tools and weapons. Sharpened sticks, sharpened stones that they used for choppers and scrapers. Sharpened sticks that they could use to poke and stab animals with. And as you can see in the picture, they didn't even wear clothes yet because they didn't have anything to make clothes with. Or they didn't know how to make clothes because nobody had thought that they needed clothes. Now we do find some art and evidence of fire from the Paleolithic age. They discovered fire which helped them to stay warm, helped them to be more comfortable and secure at night because it gave them light, helped them to cook food. They could use fire to flush animals out of the bush and kill animals. Um, fire is just a very comforting thing. Man has always loved to have a fire. You know yourself. How, long, how, how much do you like to sit around a campfire at night and just stare at the fire? Well, that's your earliest ancestors. They did the same thing. They also developed some art, which we find on cave paintings. And the most important thing they developed right here is spoken language. Some archaeologists think that that is the number one most important development in all of human history. As you can imagine, if they had never learned to communicate with each other, how would anything ever have gotten better? Yeah, well, it wouldn't. The Ice Ages. Now, the Ice Ages were periods of extremely cold weather, which created some real uh, challenges for early man. Um, the most recent Ice Age began about 100,000 years ago, when thick sheets of ice moved across parts of Europe, Asia, and North America. The ice was so large, the glaciers were so large, that they reached all the way down into the upper parts of what today is the United States of America, which is one of the reasons why that the middle of the United States is so flat, okay, is because it had been pressed down for so long by glaciers sitting on top of it, all right, all the way down into the Dakotas, maybe even as low as Nebraska, uh, there was Ice Age glaciers. Now, these glaciers caused the sea levels to be lower in the ocean, which is then caused land bridges to appear. Land bridge is, is where um, the sea level is low enough to where two pieces of land that today are not connected were connected. Let me show you. Right here is an indication of a land bridge between Asia and the United States. Now this is way up north where Alaska is, so you have to kind of know your maps. Think about where Alaska is, and then right across from Alaska is Russia, which is on the tippy top part of Asia, the continent of Asia, and Russia is the country that owns this piece of Asia here today. But back then, of course, nobody owned it. There were no countries, but there was land. And this purple indicates that uh, 100,000 years ago, this was dry land. So it was possible that early man walked right across here. They migrated as they were looking for food, looking for a better place to live, probably looking for some warmer climate. They migrated across the Bering Straits and then down through Canada and down into the United States of America. 
Now that land bridge was made possible because the sea levels were lower, because the glaciers were so big, because the climate was so cold. All right, they learned to use animals a lot. They adapted to the Ice Age. They had to eat a lot more fatty animals. They learned to use animal bones, especially the big ones like mammoth bones, like in this picture here of this mammoth house. They used their bones to make shelters. They used their fur to make clothing. Okay, And, of course, they learned more about how to use and control and create their own fire. So, what was life like for the hunter-gatherers? Well, was it hard? I don't know. It's all relative. You can't miss what you never had, right? They didn't know that they didn't have computers and cell phones. They didn't know that they didn't have air conditioning. They didn't know that they had didn't have indoor plumbing, so they didn't miss it. Now, if you were taken out of your home and transplanted back into a hunter-gatherer, you'd probably miss that stuff, and you'd say life was hard, but it's all relative. Life was definitely nomadic. They were always moving to find more food. Their shelters were just caves and pit houses. A pit house is just a house that's dug in the side of a hill with maybe a door in front of it. Huts from bones. They ate whatever they could find or kill. Berries and grains and leafy things. Small game like rabbits and other things. Big game as they got better at hunting. Now their major achievements in the Paleolithic age were language, fire, and basic tools like choppers and spears. So that's what life was like if you were a hunter-gatherer. And we're going to talk more about that later this week, but then next week we'll start Lesson 2, where you'll find out what life was like for the early agricultural communities.